Sometimes I'm a deeply negative person and it's not something I want to be but it is my reality and oftentimes I will find myself in a sour mood for no reason seemingly but I've come to realize that sometimes tidying up my living environment can help bring me into a better mood. So it doesn't have to be a very thorough, deep clean, but even just wiping down a dirty table, dusting, or starting a load of laundry, it can really just help me feel more in control of the day and it helps bring me out of that negative mood. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is the day can be turned around, whether it's turning on your favorite show or movie or tidying up your environment or opening your favorite book. I just feel like it's better to not sit in that negative headspace if there's a way to help.
my channel my name is lore this clip is probably a few minutes into this vlog already but this reading vlog is going to be so much fun i just have a gut feeling that i'm gonna find a new favorite but first and foremost i hope you all are doing super great and that life is treating you well as y'all have already seen, I read these three manga and I also read volume 11 of Blood on the Tracks, but I honestly talk about that series way too much on my channel at this point and I feel like everyone kind of knows what it's about, so that's all I'll waste of y'all's time talking about it. Picked up Look Back by Tasuki Fujimoto. This is the creator of Chainsaw Man and I thought this would be a cute coming of age, slice of life manga about two manga artists as they grow up. And it was that, but it also was not that. And it was not cute. It was sad and uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. That is literally the only word I have to describe what I was feeling while reading this. Just extreme uncomfortableness. I never thought that reading about someone else's envy or their jealousy would ever be this just like, ugh, you know, like, yikes but it was and you know what though that is a real feeling that everyone experiences and you know it's nice to explore it in a story you know what to be honest i didn't love the artwork that much i didn't hate it i just you know i don't know just meh yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So then I picked up volume two of Penguin and House. I've talked about volume one in my last reading vlog, but essentially this is just following Pen the Penguin who is a homemaker and he's really good at it and it's adorable and it's so sweet and it's very cute. Like I've said before, this is just a fun time. And then the next one I have to talk about, I was actually recommended and it is Daily Report about my witch senpai story and art by Maka Moshida. It's kind of like a rom-com about these two characters. One of them is a witch. They both work at the same place. And then it's just, you know, a rom-com from there. The witch, instead of having like a cat, has an iguana and it talks. It's so cute. It is very, very cute. I also thought the art was just so adorable. Like, look at this picture. I'm definitely interested in reading more. Finally, we get to the book that I think is going to become a new favorite, and that is How Do You Live by Genzaburo Yoshino. This is translated by Bruno Novosky, and this is a Japanese classic from the 30s. It's also middle grade or for children. This book follows our main character, Copper, after the death of his father. It really explores trying to find your place in the world and friendship and loyalty and forgiveness, making mistakes, but it's, ah, it's so cute. I am absolutely loving this so much. Copper also has an uncle who is very wise and is always offering Copper little pieces of wisdom here and there sprinkled throughout the entire book. And we also get to follow his friend group, which is shown here. It is honestly so far so comforting and so heartwarming while also being super philosophical and it really has me pondering so many different things and it's also put into words things that I have never been able to describe myself but have thought and have felt. One example of what I'm trying to get across here would be at the very beginning where Copper and his uncle are higher up and they're overlooking the city and Copper is just has the realization that Everyone he sees down there or every house he sees down there that is filled with people are actual people who are just like him and have their own thoughts, their own feelings, their own opinions, their own life experiences, and they're like actually living right there. And I don't know if any of y'all have ever done this, but every time I'm overlooking something, say I'm in a high building and I can see a bunch of cars driving in the distance, I will always just stop and have this thought like, there's a real person driving that car over there and I don't know them and I'll never know them, but here I am watching them from so far away drive that car. It's one of the weirdest things and I can never explain it, but they talk about it in this book and I just felt seen. I just really felt seen. I really did. Y'all may be asking yourselves, hey, isn't it nonfiction November? What nonfiction are you going to be reading in this reading vlog? Is it going to be one of the books off your TBR? And to that I say, 
I will be reading a nonfiction, but it's not off of my TBR. This is why I don't make monthly TBR videos because I never stick to them. But nevertheless, I was in the mood to pick up Sunset Blues by Andrew Ross, and this is just going to be discussing the failure of American housing. So something I actually have studied a lot about or have read a lot about just on my own, I have researched it, is a lot about poverty in America. So I am hoping that this book has a lot more insight and more information for me, but it is kind of small and I'm a little bit nervous that it's not going to tell me anything that I haven't already heard or haven't already read somewhere else. Like one example I'm thinking about is Evicted by Matthew Desmond, which deals a lot with American poverty, especially in regards to housing. So I'm curious to see what this book adds. So this is the lineup for the next few days and I'm definitely excited to read more of this and jump into this. I'll check back in with y'all in the next clip. All right, y'all, welcome back. We are currently standing in my kitchen, which we have not been in in a vlog for many, many months, but I decided that I wanted to be a chef tonight. I usually hate cooking. The only thing I don't really mind cooking is breakfast, different types of breakfast foods. I'm just like not a dinner type of cook. I want to be, so I thought, why not start off with a somewhat easy recipe and I looked up a chicken stir fry recipe online so if this all looks like incorrect blame the recipe do not blame me we have carrots two bell peppers and broccoli okay we also have chicken but it's in the fridge right now we have minced garlic and minced ginger I have corn starch and raw honey and I also got extra virgin olive oil and then low sodium soy sauce. We also grabbed some cured sesame seed oil. This was actually supposed to be toasted sesame seed oil, but we went to two different stores and couldn't find it. So I have to make do with what I could find. I found this in my cupboard and it expires in January. So I'm thinking of adding some noodles to it, but I'm gonna start prepping. So yeah. Mm.
right, y'all. As I was editing, I figured out that I never filmed an outro clip for this vlog. I guess it just escaped me to finalize my thoughts on these two books that I have to talk about. And I'll start off with the nonfiction. Again, I decided to read Sunset Blues by Andrew Ross about the failure of American housing. This specifically focuses in on the county that Disney World is in, in Florida. It explores the massive amounts of poverty in that area and it explores Disney's role in that as well. And then it really focuses in on living in motels and the dynamics there. I feel like this book is just a little too short to add much more to the discussion or the topic. Maybe my own fault because I can think of three things that this book discusses living in a motel in Disney World's backyard, poverty in regards to housing. It also talked a lot about the Hurricane Maria victims who were living in motels at the time. And so that really didn't tell me anything new because I read Evicted by Matthew Desmond. I've seen the movie The Florida Project, which is a great movie, by the way. So if you're ever interested, watch it. And I also watched a documentary called After Maria, which is all about the victims of Hurricane Maria and how they live in motels and stuff like that. I was like, wow, this is really just a lot of the same information repeated over if you don't know much about those topics at all, this is a great introduction to it. The writing's really simple. What I did learn from this book, but I wished it had dived deeper into these topics, were the homeless people who've made kind of like a community in the forest or like, I don't know if a forest is the great word for it, but out in the land around there in Florida. And they have their own like giant community kind of. And then I thought it was interesting how the Mormon church owns like a ton of land down there in Florida and they're not like doing anything much with it really. I was like, wow, even when I'm reading about Florida, I can't escape the Mormons. Yeah, I guess that's pretty much all I have to say about this. I mean, I think I ended up giving it like three, 3.5 stars. Finally, we have one of my new favorite books ever. Sometimes books just speak to you in a very unique and personal way that it is entirely too difficult to describe and to discuss. And that is kind of what this book means to me, honestly. I just loved reading about Copper and this group of friends and his uncle and his mom. I just, these characters, I, I really fell in love with them. I really did. I fell in love with the story itself. I wanted to annotate this so badly, but I decided that if I annotated it too much, then I wouldn't have an excuse to go back and reread it one day. So don't be surprised if one day I go back to reread this and just highlight every single page, you know? Everything I said about this earlier in this vlog remain true and my love and appreciation for this book has just increased tenfold. When a book can make me cry because of a happy moment, that is how I know that it is just right here for me. I recently talked about this book in a previous video and I discussed how Neil Gaiman described the book in the foreword, but I'm going to tell y'all now how the translator, Bruno Novosky, describes the book as just a side note. He said, as I read more of the book, I discovered that in addition to the story, it contains lessons on everything, art, science, language, history, politics, and philosophy. And that is very, very much true. This book taught me a lot about a lot. And honestly, five stars. Some people I think find this boring. I didn't find it boring. I found it a slow paced, introspective, philosophical work amazing beautiful my question to y'all is what is a book you thought you would like and enjoy but instead you ended up loving it and it became a new favorite i hope you're all doing amazingly thank you so much for watching that's pretty much all i have to say